Yeah, so as we know this, but the Rambam, as we learn, in order to bring proof to how we're supposed to approach identifying the Shiach, brings a story of Rodan and Gemara that there was an individual who was, everyone thought he is going to be Mashiach, and his name was Ben Kuziba. He made a war against the Romans. He recaptured 60 cities from the Romans. It looked like he was it. And at the end, he was killed. And then they knew that he's not. So his name was Ben Kuziba. And what's Bar Kokhba? So Bar Kokhba is the same person with the same story, just another name. He has two names. It looks like his name was Ben Kuziba. The reason why they called him Bar Kokhba because there's a Pasuk in the Chumash which says, Dorach Kochav Miyakov. There'll be a star that will shoot out. And that's a, an illusion that Mashiach will come. So because Mashiach is associated with the star, they call him Bar Kochva, an Aramaic. But it's the same person. That's what it is. Number 18, Livyasan. So we just had a class about that. That's mm -hmm. the fish yeah. that we're going to be eating. Yaina Meshumar, which means preserved wine. That's the wine we were learning about. Hashem preserves it from the beginning of creation, old ancient wine. And Sher Habar is the meat of the ox. Yes, Rani. Um, so there's people in history that people assumed would be Mashiach, but then they ended up passing and everything. How do we know they're still not Mashiach? They're just coming back at a later time. Right. So the truth is, if the people that we assume were righteous people, Theoretically, they could be Mashiach. They could. According to Torah, the person who passed away could be Mashiach. There are stories of people who assumed to be Mashiach, but they were false Mashiachs. In other words, there's a difference between a, a false Mashiach or Mashiach that didn't come to fruition. False Mashiach means that he really never had the criteria to be Mashiach and he was deceiving the public. Like the famous or infamous person, his name was Shaptai Tzvi. Yeah. He turned out to violate Torah and everything he did, he said, I'm Mashiach, so I'm above the law. There's no such thing in Judaism. Whether it's Mashiach, whether it's a prophet, whether it's Moshe Rabbeinu, every single Jewish man and woman is is under the law of Torah. Nobody's above the law. So most of their stories, someone called Frank, Jacob Frank, someone called Shabtai Tzvi. And of course, the head of Christianity was also a Jew, and he was a learned Jew. But once they started to violate Torah, that was a sign that they are, that they can't, they can't even begin to fulfill the criteria of Mashiach. Then there are people who are righteous people, and in their generation, had Mashiach come, they would have been Mashiach. So according to the Gemara, it's a possibility that one of these people could rise and be Mashiach in actuality. Yeah. Number 21. We didn't learn this yet. In fact, the next class we're going to have on Wednesday will be about number 21, so we'll skip it today. But maybe not skip it. I'll just tell you what it means. Torah Shal Mashiach. It says when Mashiach is going to come, he's going to be teaching Torah. So who's going to be going to his classes? Everybody. So the fact that we're going to be in his class makes perfect sense. But what about people like Moshe Rabbeinu, Avram Avinu, Yitzchak, Yaakov, all the sages who wrote the Talmud? It says they'll all be learning Torah from Mashiach. I'll get to you in a second. Which means he will be teaching Torah and he'll be sort of uh, teaching such new deep things that even those great Torah scholars never knew. It'll be something new. In, that's called Torah Sosha Mashiach, the teachings of Torah of Mashiach. What? Yes. Um, a second, I think there's a question here. I have a question, yeah. Uh, yeah. All people or all Jewish? Um, it's a good question, but I think that it will also be all people. Because there's a place in Tanakh where it says that Mashiach will be the teacher of all, all humanity, of all people. Yeah. 
So I don't know. It'll be separate classes. How it's going to work? I have to talk to talk to the administrator. We'll have to see how it works. What? Yeah. We'll have to talk, Mrs. Cohen. See what you can. Do. Yeah. Going back to um, this lovely lady's question about the shia, but all the rest of the people in the past, they cannot be in shia show this door. There's only one shia, so this door is. The That's right. another another discussion. So how does, yeah. No, but she, she asked the question. That's now. another discussion, but in general, according to Torah, Mashiach could be someone of a previous generation. Mm -hmm. Right. What you're saying is based on certain sikhs and things like that, but in principle, any generation that came up until now, there could be someone there in the generation that was meant to be Mashiach, and it could have been someone of a previous generation that would come back as Mashiach. Um, and it also when Mashiach comes, all the people that already passed away, they will come back. Yes. So Abraham, Jacob, Moshe, everyone will come back. Yeah. We get to meet them. Well, we need to, we need to make a... Like, uh, um, we have to start working on making these things the plain place to hang it up on each person. I'm a Brahma Vino, yes, how we can know who's who, right? <laughs> This is one of the things, by the way, you know, we keep on talking. We're going to have a whole class on this before we finish. How the way the world is today, there never, ever was a time in history that we could see so clearly, at least relate to the ideas of Mashiach. So one of them is this. Mashiach is going to teach all the Jews. How in the world could have people imagined 500, 600 years ago that one person is going to teach millions and millions of people? How's it possible? Well, now they can do it there was no microphone in those yeah. days. What? I mean, they can do it on Zoom. That's what I'm saying. There was no microphone in those days. Speaking, even if you have a few hundred people, you already can't hear. So, you know, the Rambam, I think it says in Egypt, in Alexandria of Egypt, there was a huge shul, thousands of people. It was so big that when the chazan made the blessings, the people couldn't even hear it to say Amen. So what they would do, they would raise a flag. When they raise a flag, it means he just finished the blessing. Everybody said Amen. Because they couldn't hear. So how's there going to be a whole millions and billions of people listening to one person? Today, we can relate to it in such a simple way. Zoom, internet, whatever. One person could be speaking and the whole world could be listening. And now we have a, world, a new world, a new word in our vocabulary. Um, it's probably it's in every language, but the new word is an influencer. <laughs> oh, he's an influencer on, I, on, on, on Twitter, on Schmitter, and this and that. So it's not, and not so hard to understand a person, a one single person, if he has enough people listening to him on the internet, he becomes an influencer. Unfortunately, many people use the influence for hate, incitement, negative things. Mashiach will come and it'll be used for positive. Number 22, Ani, Ani means a poor person, riding on a donkey. What's that? It's one of the ways described in Tanakh that Mashiach will be like a poor person riding on a donkey. Before we had another way described, it'll be flying with a cloud. It's a metaphor. What's the metaphor? That we learned in class that there are two ways Mashiach can come. One is in a very natural way, gradual, and the other is in a super miraculous way. So the natural way is described as a, a poor person riding on a donkey, and means that eventually things will develop, but initially they'll come step by step gradually. The other possibility is that it'll be something supernatural, something miraculous will happen, and that'll be how Mashiach will be revealed. Number 23, he nezer Mashiach ba. Where is that from? I know you're going to say it's from a song, right? But where does the song get it from? So, what? From? So, at least for us in our generation, these words have special meaning because these are the words that the Rebbe used to say that we're living now in the times that she is coming is imminent. 
But the words come from Medrash. That the Medrash says there's going to be a time where we're going to hear an announcement that Mashiach is arriving. And those words will be, Hini ze Mashiach ba. It's based on a Pasuk and Shir Shir, the Song of Songs. Number 24. Olam haba. What does that mean? The world to come. That's another term that's used to describe the time of Mashiach. It's called Olam haba. That's because that's going to be in the future. Sometimes when it says Olam haba, it means where the soul is in heaven. And sometimes it's referring to the future when Mashiach will come. Number 25, Beit HaMikdash Ashlishi. Why is it the third one? <laughs> right. The first one was built by Shlomo HaMelech. The second one was built after the Babylonian exile by Ezra. And the third one was built by Mashiach. 26, Shabbos Chazon. I'm sure you won't remember that. But, but isn't it that ah, the third one, there are two opinions, or three, that the third one is going to be built by Mashiach, or Mashiach and us, or by us? Right. Yeah. Even those opinions are technically how it's going to happen, but that it's going to be through Mashiach's guidance, and with the coming of Mashiach, everyone agrees it's part of Mashiach's accomplishments. Yeah. No, it's a that uh, we dream that we can see... Like right, right. It's something which we don't learn about a lot because it's a Shabbos in the summer when we don't have classes. <laughs> but let me tell you now, and that is we learned about it when we learned about the third base of English, I think, or maybe we, we missed it. For, there are a lot of Shabbos in the year that have a name, like Shabbos Zohar, we read about Amalek. And there's a Shabbos Chazak, like last week, when we finished reading an entire book of the Torah. Uh, we don't call it Shabbos Eicha, but the Shabbos before Tisha B'Av is called Shabbos Chazayin. Why Shabbos Chazayin? Because the part of the prophets that we read starts with the word Chazon, which means there's a vision. The word Chazon means a vision. So normally we interpret it and we look at it, it's about a vision that's going to be in the times of the destruction of the Basin English. The prophets warned the Jews, if you don't uh, improve, God forbid, the base of English will be destroyed. That's the vision. It was a, but one of the things that is very, very uh, talk, much talked about in the Rebbe Sichas is that Rebbe Levi Yitzhak of Bardichev, he was one of the Hasidic Rebbes and a student of the Magid of Mizrich, he was also a colleague of the Alter Rebbe. And he said something very powerful. And he said as follows, Shabbos Chazon means what you said a moment ago, is the day that we see. What do we see? We see the third temple. And he explained it with a parable, that a father was a king, loved his son, and because of that, he had the tailor make a beautiful, beautiful garment for him. He gave it to him as a gift. He didn't conduct himself properly, and the garment got torn to pieces. So he said, okay, I'll make you another one. That the tailor made another garment, beautiful garment. But again, he didn't, he wasn't careful and he got torn to pieces. So the third time the father said, listen, I'm not, I'm making you a garment. I'm going to prepare, but I'm not giving it to you until you learn how to change. When you change, I'll give it to you. But in order to motivate him from time to time that he should change, once in a while, he would show it to him. You see, this is waiting for you. Once you change, you get it. So he said the same as with Hashem. He gave us the first base of Mikdash. We ended up not treating it properly. It was destroyed. So he gave us the second base of Mikdash. We didn't treat it properly. That was destroyed. Then he gave us the third base of Mikdash. He said, I'm preparing it here in Shamayim, in heaven, but I'm not giving it to you until you improve. Once you improve, Mashiach comes and you get the third base of English. But from time to time, he shows it to us. When is that? That's the Shabbos before Tisha B'Av. And that's why it's called Chazon. We see a vision of the third base of English. 
But most people, if we ask them, you see, did you see any visions? And the answer is no. <laughs> so the answer is, first of all, tzaddikim, they see this vision. And also, every one of us, even though we don't see it, our neshama sees it. One of the things we learn in Hasidus is, uh, it's called, uh, it's a phrase in Gemara. And the Gemara says like this, even though we don't see it, our mazel sees it. What does mazel have to do with the price of fish in China? So the answer is like this. There's a story in Tanakh with Daniel. It says like this, Daniel saw a vision. And what he saw was so terrifying that he was shaking. And his knees were knocking against each other from fear. And there were people near him. They didn't see it, but they were also overcome with fear and they ran to hide. So the Gemara asked, if they didn't see it, why were they so afraid? He was a prophet, so he saw it. They didn't see it. The Gemara answers, they didn't see it, but their mazel saw it. <laughs> Who's the mazel? So there's a lot of discussion. What does mazel mean in this context? It doesn't mean good luck. It's, that's used in a different context when you say mazel tov. But here it means something else. It means there's a deeper part of our neshama, of our soul, that sees things spiritually that we don't feel and see consciously. So, for example, tonight is going to be Shabbos. It's a special Shabbos. It's Erev Rosh Chodesh. And Shabbos is a regular day of the week. I don't, we don't see differences. Yet. We feel a little bit different. But the neshama, our soul, sees and feels the holiness that's there on Shabbos. If a person goes to the base Hamigdash, if when he went, not necessarily that he saw something different with his physical eyes, but he felt different because their neshama sees the godliness that's there. And the same with many other things. So that Shabbos, we don't see the third base of English, but our neshama sees it. And what happens when the neshama sees it, it has an effect on the conscious part of me, that a person will be more motivated and, and be sort of uh, excited about doing whatever they can to get the third base of English. That's called Shabbos Chazayim. Number 27, Hilchas Beis Abchira. This is um, during the summer when, these, when the three weeks come, you probably know that there, these are three weeks. You're not allowed to make a wedding during these three weeks. Yeah. You're not allowed to buy new clothes during three weeks. You can't take a hair because we're supposed to mourn the destruction of the Beis English. The Rebbe instituted that in, in addition to mourning the destruction of the English, we should do something also in the positive. Do things to rebuild the Beis English. One of them is to learn during this time the laws of how the Beis English is supposed to be built. Because it says in the Medrash that when we learn about the laws of the Beis English, Hashem considers it as if we're actually building the Beis English. What do we learn? There are three places we can learn about how the measurements of the Beis English. One place is in Tanakh, in a book which is called Yecheskel. That's the book that has the measurements of the Beis English. One, the third Beis English. One is in, in the Mishnah. There's a tractate of Talmud, which is called Midos, which means not character traits, but this Midos means measurements. Measurements of the Beis English. And the third one is the Rambam. Maimonides has a whole section which is called, these are the words you see here, Hilchis Beis Abchirin, the laws of the Beis Amignish. But he uses a different name, not Beis Amignish, Beis Abchira. What does Beis Abchira mean? Anyone know what the word Bechira means? Oh, Choice. Because it says in the Chumash, this is the house that I chose to be there. So the Beis Amignish is called Beis Abchira, the house where Hashem chose. So if you hear the words Hilchis Beis Abchira, number one, it means the Rambam, and usually it's referring to the summer months, weeks rather, when it's a uh, custom to learn the laws of how the base of English was built. And number 28 is the other source, Mesech Tamidus. That's the tractate of measurements. Which measurements? The measurements of the base of English. So by learning about it, the Hashem says that I will consider as if you're actually engaged in building it, which will hasten the building of the base of English. In Israel, there's a whole machon, there's a whole uh, institution that they're already actually building 
sort of certain things which they say when Mashiach comes, we'll use it for the base of English. And over there, if you go, you see a huge model where you can see how things look. It's very, very real to see the measurements. Yes, Ron. I know people say that we're in like, the generation of Mashiach coming and everything, but in reality, is it going to happen? Because there's so, I understand like we're learning about the Beis and we're doing things to help, but we're also doing so much, we're not doing things that if we did do them, it could bring Mashiach, like something as simple as loving your fellow Jew. There's still so much hate among Jewish people. Is it like, in reality, is he actually going to be coming as soon as everyone wants him to? So I prepared this. This is another thing we're supposed to be doing as soon as we finish this. And we'll talk about that question. Good question. Number 29, Elio Anabi. What's his connection to Mashiach? He's going to say that Mashiach is coming. Right. It says that Elio Anabi will announce that Mashiach is coming. We learned about this in class. In fact, we say this when we do the Birchat Amazon, when we bench. Rachmoni Yishlach Lanu, Hashem should send us Elio Anabi. He's going to let us know that Mashiach is coming. Fantastic. What? Oh, it, <laughs> no, it does say Mashiach will come in the month of Nisan, but it means there's certain times where it's more conducive for Mashiach to come, but actually he can come anytime and come right now. There's even a place where it says he won't come Erev Shabbos because people are busy preparing for Shabbos. <laughs> but the would say he'll come Erev Shabbos, he'll come <laughs> middle of the night, by day. <laughs> then we'll ask him, how could it be? He'll answer the question, that's all. Let him come and then answer the question. <laughs> The um, it actually, actually in Gemara, there are a lot of questions, but the Gemara has no answer. The Gemara says, When Elio and Nabi will come, he'll answer this question, he'll answer that question. Yeah. It's a famous quote in Gemara. So, therefore, the Rebbe will say, Let him come, Arab Shabbos, let him come whenever he comes, and we'll have a question, we'll answer that question too. <laughs> I remind you, some of the, those of you that were here, that there was an interesting thing someone pointed out that when Mashiach will come and Elio will announce it, so the two people involved will be Mashiach and Elio, that's Mem and Aleph. Mashiach is Mem, Elio is Aleph. Who are the two people that took us out of Mitzrayim? Moshe and Aaron, it's Mem and Aleph. Who are the two people, the heroes of Purim? Mordechai and Esther, it's Mem and Aleph also, yeah. I try to figure out for Hanukkah, it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number 29. Number 30, what does that quote mean? Gedola, Tzedakah, Shemekarevet, et Hagula. Right, Tzedakah is great because it hastens redemption. It's one of the biggest mitzvahs that uh, are relevant, and especially in these times, is Tzedakah, the Rebbe himself. But if you think of it, everyone knows the Rebbe stood on the line, gave out dollars, gave out brachas. There's one part people might even forget. What was, the, what was the dollar part? What was that about? Why did he give the dollar? The dollar was, I'm giving you a dollar to give Tzedakah. The Rebbe was saying, I'm making you a shliach, that you should give this dollar to Tzedakah. So every person who got a dollar will take that will take that dollar to keep it. They will exchange it with another dollar and add something and give it to Zerka. So the Rebbe was very into generating as much as possible to give, to give, to give Zerka because Zerka is the mitzvah that brings Mashiach closer. But Zerka doesn't only mean money. Zerka could mean anything, giving someone a sandwich, giving somebody clothing, giving somebody a smile, giving somebody a helping hand, and anything and everything is also a form of tzedakah. And that's the biggest mitzvah now that is so relevant because this brings Mashiach closer. So that's number 30, and we'll leave the rest for next time. And now we'll go to this. Uh, are there anybody, anybody here in the room that didn't get this one yet? Let me give it out. I'll leave one for myself. Thank this you. you can give, this you can give, this you can give. And this can go. Can I have one? Yeah. Who else? Okay, so we began this on... Uh, 
on Wednesday. It said on top of the page, this is a, a sikha that the Rebbe gave, the Aveda of Shlichas has been completed, which was a very shocking statement. Of course, it's a good statement, but shocking, how could, what did, could that mean? The only thing left to do is to be Makabal Mashiach, to receive Mashiach. And this will enable Mashiach to do his shlichas, his mission, to take us out of Golas. So we needed to explain it. So first of all, uh, last week, not last week, but two, uh, on Wednesday, two days ago, I brought, I showed you the sources about Dovah HaMelech, about uh, doing the bracha over the moon, that all this has to do with the fact that it says, in order for us to go out of Golas, we need to ask for three things. Remember? One is, we want Hashem to be revealed in this world, and, he should have, and His sovereignty should be in the world. The whole world should accept Him. In fact, we say this every day in Aleinu. It'll be in that day. Hashem will be one, and His name will be one. And the whole Aleinu talks about how the nations in the world will destroy their idols, get rid of all their things that are against, and they will all accept Hashem as their king. So that's one thing. We all accept Hashem's kingdom. The second thing is that we're going to ask Hashem that we want the third base of English. And the third thing is that we're going to say that we want the descendant of King David to be our king. You remember we said there's a, well, the reason for that is because in the times of David HaMelech's grandson, the Jewish people rejected all three. There was a new king. His name was Rehoboam. He was the grandson of King David. He was supposed to be the king. Another king came about. His name was Yeroboam. Sounds similar. And he didn't allow Jews to go to the base of Megdash. He forced Jews, and he would kill them if they didn't <laughs> listen, to worship idols. That means they worshipped idols. They rejected Hashem's kingdom. They didn't go to the base of Migdash, they rejected the base of Migdash. They didn't go to King David's grandson, they had their own king, means they rejected the kingdom, which is King David. So when Mashiach comes, we have to ask for all three. And if you remember, we showed you in davening, in benching, that we have to ask for all three, otherwise we're not fulfilling the obligation in the davening or in the benching. So now... Let me show you this sikha where the Rebbe said that everything was done and all we need to do now is just the third thing is accepting Mashiach. So let's look at page. There's no page numbers here, right? Isn't it 94? On the bottom it says 94. Yep. So this was once a year the shluchim come to the Rebbe they would come to the Rebbe to seven seven. We would speak to them, and this was, I think, maybe the first. But this was the international. In other words, all the shluchim, the whole world, came to the Rebbe, and this was the Rebbe's message. In fact, the last message, because after that, a few months later, the Rebbe had the stroke. This was the last message the Rebbe gave to the shluchim, and he said like this: From here, it is understood, since the shluchim have passed the completion of the beginning of their shlichas, which means they already finished the first phase of their shlichas. Shlichas means their mission as a shliach, spreading of Torah, of Judaism, and the wellsprings of Torah. It's long after the middle of their shlichas, and now they've already concluded the shlichas completely, as announced by the leader of our generation, which is the Rebbe's father-in-law, and yet the true and complete gaula still didn't come. We must say that there remains something to do in order that Gula should actually come. That was the Rebbe saying, the Shluchim was sent out and they completed their mission and Mashiach is still not here. So we must say there's still something to do. So that itself sounds like a contradiction. If there's still something to do, that means they didn't complete it. If they did complete it, there should be nothing to do. That's question number one. Question number two, what does he say needs to be done? It's known that in every generation there is born a descendant of Yehuda. In other words, someone who is a descendant from the tribe of Yehuda who is fitting to be Mashiach for the Jewish people. It's also known 
another source that one who is befitting because of his righteousness to be the redeemer, when the time arrives, Hashem will reveal himself to that person and Hashem will send him to take the Jewish people out of Golas. The first quote comes from Bartanura. Bartanura is one of the famous commentators on Mishnah. And the second quote comes from the Chassam Sofer. Chassam Sofer is one of the greatest authorities of Allah that lived about 200, maybe 250 years ago. According to the announcement of the Rebbe, my father-in-law, the leader of our generation, the only shlich in our generation, the only mashiach in our generation, everything has been completed. It is understood that this is beginning to be fulfilled, the verse where it says, send the one who you have selected to send, the shlichus of the Rebbe, my father-in-law. And that remains in the divine service of shlichus, is to actually accept the countenance of righteous Mashiach, for him to be able to fulfill his shlichus, to take all Jewish people out of Golos. We have to do this piece by piece, and we don't have enough time. Our main competition is fighting with us again. <laughs> So let me just at least take the first few minutes and start with Rani's question, which is, how can the Rebbe say everything was done? Or how can we say all the shluchim could finish the shlichas? There are still millions of people that are, you spoke about people not getting along with each other, and then there are many people that aren't even beginning to observe the basics of Judaism. There's so much work to do. So the answer is, Again, one part of it we spoke about this a lot, and that is that when we say we have to be ready for Mashiach, who has to be ready for Mashiach? Is it each individual or the entire generation? Entire generation. Not just me as a, what? Both. But then there's a third thing. It's not just me and the generation. It's also all the Jews that ever lived from the beginning of time. They're all going to be benefiting from Mashiach. So we explained that there are two identities to every one of us. One is who we are as individuals. My name is such and such, and this is my position, this is what I do, and this is where I am. And then I'm part of a bigger picture, which means we're all collectively one identity. You might remember I asked you a question, why is it that if God forbid a Jew dies anywhere in the world, nobody even doesn't mean anything. But if a terrorist would kill a Jew somewhere in a remote place because he's a Jew, most Jews around the world would be shook up. What's the difference? Every day, unfortunately, there are people who pass away. Every day, Jews all over the world. You don't find people getting shook up. If one person is killed by a terrorist because he's Jewish or because he's Israeli, then everybody gets shook up. Why? What's the difference? It's like injustice as a terrorist. Yeah, a lot of injustice happens all the time, every day. There's so many criminals. Because he got killed just because he's a Jew. It wasn't that natural that. So why should that shake me up more than a person dies? He passed away. It's like when something bad happens, we all are um all the is united, all the things are like more united. So when something like this happens, like something's bad to the Jew, one Jew is like affecting all of us. So, so let me explain that a little bit better. When that Jew was was unfortunately killed by a terrorist, he didn't just hit that person. He hit all of us. If he hit him as a Jew, we're all attacked. By the way, not even Jews. Lahavdo, if an American was killed somewhere because he's an American, every American feels shook up. Why? Because it wasn't killed. It was a national thing. It was killed because he's an American. It was an attack on every single person. So people who belong to a country or to a group, in our case, we belong to the nation of Israel, we have two identities. One identity as an individual, and one is called the collective identity. We're all part of one nation, Am Yisrael. And Am Yisrael is not just people in our generation. Am Yisrael is from Avram Avinu. Every Jew that lived, we're all part of one nation. And when we say that we've already done so much good and so much positive things, and now we're ready for Mashiach, it's not just what I did and what you did. It means everything that was done throughout the three and a half thousand years, all the Torah, all the mitzvahs, all the people that suffered and gave up their lives because they're Jewish and everything they've done, all together is such an enormous, unlimited, infinite amount of good 
that at this point we're all ready and worthy for Mashiach. Even though a lot of bad was also done, but first of all, the bad gets erased through children. Or the bad gets erased through people going through a process of suffering of some sort in this world and that world. So the negative things, they don't last forever. But anything that's godly lasts forever. So if somebody 2,300 years ago did a little good deed, that remains. And all that good accumulated, accumulated, accumulated. And on that basis, when the Rebbe says, we're ready for Mashiach, we deserve Mashiach, that means we being part of one collective identity as the Jewish nation, we all together now are a place where we deserve Mashiach. So even though there are two people that don't like each other, or one guy punches the other guy in the nose, that doesn't take away from the fact that collectively all of us are in a place, billions and billions and infinite good that was done that are now worthy and deserving and ready for Mashiach. That's the point. I think I, I used the analogy once that if somebody, God forbid, had a very serious heart condition and he had to be in a hospital for a year and they had to have uh, different surgeries and then rehab, rehab and everything they went through at the, end of the, at the end of the year, the doctors say, you don't realize you're as good as new. You can go back, do everything you did before as if you never had a heart problem. You're healthy 100%. And he says, no, I have, I have an ingrown toenail. My to <laughs> the nail on my toe is hurting me. And they'll start laughing. <laughs> you're healthy. Ingrown toenail, that's an external little something that doesn't affect your general health and your general functioning. You can go back to your family, you can go back to work, go back to everything you did. And, and that's what we're saying. Even though as an individual, things aren't perfect, but as a collective identity, we're complete and ready for Mashiach. What does it have to do with shlichus? So we'll have to wait till Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, joy and uh, Shabbos. We wish Hana much success in her spiritual yes, Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>